Hello, this is the Tradesight US Forex Market Preview, an international economic data roadmap for the week beginning February 10th, Sunday, ending the 15th. This will be uh, options expiration week already in February. It's Valentine's week. It's all sorts of things. What it isn't uh, yet is a holiday week, although the following Monday is President's Day. So we've got a full week ahead of us. It's been a really boring multiple months, really bad ranges this last week again, even though the dollar index bounced a bit. So I don't know what we're going to get, but we'll talk about it. Here's the dollar index daily chart. And you can see it actually rose this week. So we got, But there were days where the ranges were so bad on these individual pairs that it really was just absolutely meaningless to us. Here's the euro dollar. You know, high to low for the week. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but just it, it did obviously the inverse of the dollar index descend a bit. Uh, the pound dollar was so flat. Look at that. That's the one that didn't do anything this week at all. Aussie dollar had one down day, and other than that, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday were all pretty flat. Euro yen, uh, it was pretty flat, although we've almost got a 13 buy signal here on the euro yen. Here's the pound yen, also flat. Pound Everything with the pound was just flat. So there's really not much to see. And then when you look at the intra week action in 30 minute candles, so the euro declined, but even though it declined every single day and made a move, high to low for the week is only 140 pips. That's usually, I mean, 120 to 125 pips is average daily range on the euro. So the idea that we're trading 140 pips for the week, even though it looks like a steady move, that each day individually was very, very tiny. Uh, and here's the pound dollar high to low for the week here was a little bit wider at 250 pips. But again, it came mostly the Tuesday because when Monday, Wednesday, uh, and Friday were definitely flat, and Thursday was a back and forth day. So it was not a very interesting week uh, in the Forex markets from a trading perspective. All right, let's take a look at the economic calendar for the week ahead. Uh, starting Sunday with the bank holiday in Japan, CPI out of Switzerland, GDP and manufacturing production and other numbers, goods trade balance, index of services out of UK at 4.30 a.m. Monday morning Eastern time. Uh, we've got uh, some things that don't matter that much. We've got M2 Money Stock out of Japan Monday night. Home Loans out of Australia, along with their business confidence number. Tertiary Industry Activity out of Japan. Preliminary Machine Tool Orders out of Japan. We're already into Tuesday with nothing major. M2 Money Supply out of China coming out at some point in the back end of the week. Starting could be Tuesday through Friday. New loans the same way. We've got the Ecofin meetings out of Europe. Uh, NFIB Small Business Index here in the U.S. at 6 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. Not a big one either. Jolt's job openings at 10. we got the Fed Chair speaking at 12.45. Australia Westpac Consumer Sentiment, Japan's PPI. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, New Zealand does their rate announcement. Uh, first one in a while there. UK goes to their inflationary numbers. So you got the CPI, the PPI, the RPI, the Housing Price Index. All of them at once at 4.30 a.m. I always say this every month. I love that they put all the inflationary numbers out at once. I think that's great. Europe Industrial Production, German 30-year bond auction, CPI out of the U.S. So that's one of our big three each month. So we'll be half size going into Wednesday. Crude oil inventories here at 10.30. Federal budget balance at 2. FPI out of New Zealand. Preliminary GDP out of Japan. MI inflation expectations. RICS house price balance. China's trade balance number, uh, and then we're going to Thursday already. German preliminary GDP, WPI, uh, PPI out of Switzerland, flash GDP and employment change, 10-year bond auction, that's out of Europe, 10-year bond auction out of the UK, Canada's manufacturing sales number, retail sales and PPI here in the US, along with our weekly initial and continuing jobless claims numbers. Business inventory is at 10 a.m., Natty Gas at 10.30 We've got uh, CPI out of China going in, PPI going into Friday, 30 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursday night, uh, revised industrial production out of Japan, and then Italian trade balance, UK retail sales, Europe trade balance, import prices, Empire State Manufacturing Index here in the U.S., capa capacity utilization industrial production at 915, preliminary University of Michigan sentiment number, and that is it. Oh, tick long-term purchases. So some big numbers, but, uh, you know, nothing... It's going to rock the boat probably. We've got no Fed announcements, nothing except for New Zealand's rate announcement this week. So we'll just see what we get. I mean, obviously, we're mid-range here on the dollar index for the last uh, five months, and we're exactly where we were in August. So we haven't gone anywhere in a while, and the ranges have been pretty flat. So Forex has not been super exciting. Charts, as usual, brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple of weeks. Have a great trading week.